Hey everyone, welcome to Burning Ice Tech. Today we'll be covering the installation of Active Directory Domain Services or ADDS for short. Now in this video, we're first going to be taking a look at the basics of moving from a workgroup situation to a situation where you'll have a domain and also have your devices on your network joined to that domain. Then we'll be moving to the prerequisites of installing ADDS and then lastly, we'll be covering the actual installation of the ADDS role. Okay, folks, I'm going to start things off by using the same picture I used in the previous lesson of this course. The setup we have in front of us right now is just three computers that are on a network, but they are all three currently on a work group with computers. By default, if you install Windows on the machine, it's on a work group, in case you didn't know. Now, what we want to achieve here is we want to try and get these machines joined to a domain. As we discussed in the previous lesson in this course, to be able to join a domain, you need a server. So here we go, there's a server. Now on this server, we obviously have the operating system Windows Server installed. That on its own is not enough though for this to work. We need that server to be a domain controller. And for it to be that, we need to have the Active Directory software installed. Now how do we get that installed? we need to add a role on that server. And that role, my dear friends, is the ADDS role. The ADDS stands for Active Directory Domain Services, in case you don't remember from the previous lesson. Now, eventually, when you have the ADDS role installed, you'll be able to promote that server to a domain controller and create your domain, which you can actually join your devices to. Now, when it comes to installing this role called ADDS, there are some prerequisites you need to be aware of. You'll first have to make sure that you have them all configured and set up before you can actually go ahead and install ADDS. Okay, so you're probably wondering, what are these prerequisites? Well, it's things like making sure the server has a proper name. You'll have to give it a name. When you install the operating system, Windows generates a default name. It usually starts with WIN dash and then some random letters and numbers. The example I have here for you is pretty much what a typical default name would look like for a new Windows server. You will have to go name the server to whatever it needs to be. The name commonly has the letters DC in the name, but this isn't compulsory though. For example, in my case, I could call this Burning Ice Tech Dash DC maybe. That's probably a bit long though, so maybe something like BIC Dash DC. So in case you haven't noticed, that's actually just the Burning Ice Tech um, shortened. <laughs> yeah, I'm sneaky like that. We're also going to want to set up the IP configuration on the server. So normally a domain controller has a static IP address, which is also known as a fixed IP. In other words, it doesn't change. It'll always be the same IP. Now of the IP, you choose whatever IP address is appropriate for your specific network. I can't tell you what's going to work for your network because each company is obviously unique. In my case here, I chose 172.16.0.10. With the subdate mask, that will be dictated by the environment that you're actually in. Or just click in the box and it will automatically fill itself in by default. With the default gateway, you need that if you're going to be connected to the internet or other networks. Basically, traffic will be leaving your, your network environment. That is not our interest at this moment. So I'm going to leave that blank. I'm not going to even define a default gateway right now. That is something we can do in another lesson. The important setting is the DNS server. I am building the first domain controller in this entire Active Directory domain. So that DNS server has to point back to the local machine. To do this, I can either set the loopback address, which is 127, Dot zero, dot zero, dot one. that's a well-known loopback address, or I can just go and type in the local machine's own IP address, which in my case was the 172.16.0.10. It really doesn't matter which one you choose. You can either go and choose the loopback address, you can go type in the machine's own IP address. It, in the end of the day, it comes down to personal preference to do the same thing. The point of this is when we install the Active Directory, it has to write a lot of records to the DNA server, which is why we're doing it here. And if you're wondering what the DNA server does, that will be a video on its own in this course. If we cover that now, we'll be getting off topic, and this video is obviously about installing ADDS. 
All right, folks, that's for the most part the prerequisites you will need to go and configure on your server before you can actually go ahead and install the ADDS role. I think now that we have that out of the way, though, let me quickly give you guys a demo of where on the server you can actually go and configure all of this. Alrighty, folks, here we are on a virtual machine I've set up. I've just installed Windows Server 2019 on this virtual machine, and that is that. Absolutely nothing else has been installed or configured on this server whatsoever. Nothing. So my intention is to eventually have this become a domain controller. So I'm obviously going to have to go and install the ADDS role. And before we can get to that, we need to go and set up those prerequisites we spoke of just a moment ago. So the first of which was to go and change the name. Now, where can you go and check the name? One place you can go and check that is in the server manager. This is something that normally pops up on your server as soon as you start your server. It, it pops up automatically. If it does not, there's sometimes an icon here in the taskbar. If it's not there, you can go here to the start button. You can just go click there and it's going to open server manager. And once you've got server manager open, which is going to be open automatically, most likely, you can go here to where it says local, top left. And you can see here currently, there's my current server name or computer name or machine name. Now, as we've said just a few moments ago, it normally starts with W, I, N, dash, and then a bunch of random numbers and letters, exactly like my example. So if you want to go and change it, you can go click on it there. That's one place. It's not the only way to go and do it. You can also see currently this server is on a work group. So one way I can go and change that is to go click there and change it from a work group to a domain. I can go and join this machine to an existing domain. And we're not going to do that because we intend on actually making this the domain controller, which is going to be hosting the domain. IP address, that's probably going to be here. That's another place you can go and change it. So let's start off with the computer name. I'm going to click on that. To rename this computer or change its domain or work group, click change. Yes, please. You can see I can change it here as well. So I can change it from a work group to a domain. We're not going to do that. Name is the computer generated default name. So I'm going to go and make that something like burning ice tech dash DC because my intention is to make this a domain controller. So if I were to go click on OK, now you're going to find that normally when you go and rename the PC or if you join it to a domain, that server normally wants to restart. So as soon as the server restarts, I'm going to do a quick time lapse just to speed things along for you guys. So let's see what happens. I'm going to go click on OK. And there we go. You must restart your computer to apply these changes. That's fine. We expected as much. So as soon as this machine restarts, I'm going to do a time lapse for you guys. Otherwise, you're going to wait forever in a day. So let's quickly do that. So as soon as I restart this machine, it's going to go and change the computer's name to that which we saw there. So let's close that now. We're fortunate enough. A few moments later. All right, folks, here we are back. Um, in the meantime, I actually went and made myself a cup of coffee and everything. So it was actually quite a few moments later. So let's go check it out. Local server. And there we go. Name has been changed. So it no longer sorts of WIN dash and a bunch of random numbers and letters. It's just burning ice tech dash DC or whatever you chose in your specific environment. So another thing we need to go and do now is obviously IP address. So let's go take a look at that. I'm going to go here to Ethernet. I'm going to go click on that. There we go. I click on that. Sucker, properties, IP version 4, properties. And there we go. So at the moment you can see it's currently on automatic or dynamic, as some of you guys might know it. So we want this to be a fixed slash static IP address. So we're going to go click there and give it an IP address. That means whatever we type in here, it's going to stay on that IP until me or someone else comes and changes it one day. Ideally, that's what you want for a server, especially a domain controller. So I'm going to go and use the same IP for argument's sake that we really had earlier in our example. 172.16.0 and 10. So you can't just necessarily go and use my IP. It depends on your specific network, you know, what your IP range is. So you're going to have to go and look at your IP range. Subnet, well... I'm going to go and just click there in the block, but that is actually dictated by your specific environment. So if you know something about something about networking, you would know that this is going to basically go and subdivide your network. It'll distinguish how big your network is going to be, how many subnets you have, you know, subcategories and all that kind of stuff. That's, that's, that's a whole course actually just on its own. So for now, let's just go to the defaults. As I've said earlier in the example, I'm going to leave default gateway on blank for now. But then in a nutshell, that's going to basically give this machine access to the outside world. 
outside my network something like the internet or an external network so what IP address does it need to go to this server to be able to escape this network of mine you know that sounds funky saying it like that but if my machine wants to escape this network of mine or if something wants to gain access to this network of mine through what device does this machine or that that component need to go so it's probably going to be your router you know so it's probably going to be your router's ip that is most likely but in a real company environment it might very well not just be your router the average company that's medium to large size doesn't have just a router they've got physical firewalls and stuff like that in place as well so there's a good chance that this might be your physical firewalls IP address and from there it'll go to your router. Story for a different day. The important one is your DNS. So as we've said earlier, we intend on installing ADDS on this, on this machine. And with that, if this is your main domain controller, your parent one, your root one, in other words, your first domain controller, on the first one, we normally go and install DNS. You'll find that that box is actually ticked automatically for you in most cases. If you're going to go and install an RODC, a read-only domain controller, which is like a second child domain controller, normally we drop that at like a, a branch office. If you're going to go do that on those ones, we don't necessarily go and install DNS. So for now, you can either go and type in 127.0.0.1, which is a loopback address, which means it's going to loop the loop back to this machine, since this machine is going to be the DNS. Or alternatively, I can just go and type in my own IP address in there. It's a potato potato situation that does the same thing. So for now, I'm going to click on OK. That's satisfactory. Close. And there we go, folks. Prerequisite wise, we've just done the prerequisites uh, for the most part. So now we can go ahead and try and add the ADDS role. So how do we actually add a role, you might ask? So I'm going to go here to dashboard. You can either go here to this option here. It says add roles and features. Alternatively, you can go here to the top right hand side in your server manager on server 2019, click on manage and you can go and add a role there. You can also add features you can see, there it also says features. Here is the only one way you can go and re remove a role or feature, that's literally just in reverse. So let's just click on this one for now, it doesn't really matter. Click on next, next, next. And then here we see a list of the available roles we've got to our disposal. Now, what do we want to install? ADDS, Active Directory Domain Services. You can see it's the second one from the top, so we're going to tick that block. Please note that DNS is not ticked at this time yet. Click on that block. It's giving me a list of features that it wants to install as well. So this is actually pretty nice of Microsoft. They do this of most roles, and they've been doing this for years, even of previous versions of servers. So if you don't have any experience on server, or maybe just not of this particular component, it's nice that they automatically tick components for you feature-wise that they think you're probably going to need and use because maybe I don't know what I'm going to need or use. So if that's the case, you can just go to the defaults and quite frankly, even if you know what you're doing, you're probably just going to go to the defaults. For now, I'm going to go to the defaults and just say add features. There we go. I'm going to click on next. Here's features. So you can think of these as add-ons, not something we're going to cover today. That's a topic for a different video. But these are basically add-ons that's going to add on to that role. It's upgrades, features, expansion packs, you know, whatever you want to go and call them. So for now, let's just go to the defaults. You'll notice that it automatically ticked that one. That is not installed yet. It actually ticked that one for me, the one that says group policy management, because normally group policies in Active Directory go hand in hand. So let's go next, next, install. And there we go. I'm going to do a bit of a time lapse here again for you guys just to speed things along. A few moments later and we're back. So as you can see ADDS has just been installed and that for the most part is all we need to go and do today. Now once you've installed the ADDS role you still actually need to go and promote it. So just because you've installed the role doesn't mean it's functional in any way. So one of the things we're going to be covering in one of our next videos here very shortly is the ability to go and promote your domain controller. So you're going to go here to the top right hand side that little flag icon there, that's your notification section. We're going to go here to where it says promote the server to domain controller. And we'll show you guys how to go and actually promote this to domain controller and go through the whole configuration of choosing your domain and the whole works. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be one of the next videos. Like usual, guys, I hope this video has been informative. If it has been, please smash that like button. If you're new to this channel, smash the subscribe button otherwise you're not gonna know when the next episode comes out so yeah i'll see you guys next time on episode nine
Donna, Mummy. 